Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. Welcome to another episode of Marketing School. I'm Eric Sue, And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to give you the seven point Facebook advertising checklist. So first and foremost, the number one thing you want to look at when you're doing a Facebook ad is you want to have a really good image, right? So you can use tools like uh, I've recommended Design Pickle in the past, which is uh, they'll allow you to make a lot of different images. Um, you can even go to good stock photography sites too. You can use a tool like Canva. Um, make sure that you have a good image um, to drive, you know, great, get people interested, drive a good click-through rate over, um, and you'll be surprised. I mean, oftentimes you'll be A-B testing different images. A good image outperforms a, a terrible one by a large margin. So a good image is number one. Number two, have a lot of text. Unless you're trying to get like Facebook fan likes, you don't need too much text. But in general, if you're trying to drive traffic back to your website, I know a lot of people recommend not doing too much text. I found that the more text you do and the more storytelling you do and the more persuasive copy you use within your ads, your cost per click may go up, but your conversions from those visitors drastically increase and it outweighs the increasing cost. So make sure you use really persuasive text because even if someone's not clicking through, you can use that text to pre-sell them. All right, number three, try different objectives. So oftentimes I hear from people saying, oh, you know, well, I only do uh, website conversions now. That's the way to go. Sometimes I hear from other people, well, you know, website views does really well. Our CPC is really low. And, you know, the key takeaway here is that there's no real set answer for this. You have to go out there and you have to go try things on your own because just because somebody else is prescribing something through a blog post or sharing their experience doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the same exact results. So in many cases today, we're hearing that views are doing really well. Facebook uh, video views are doing really well for people. And, you know, they're able to scale. That might not be the same for other people in different niches or it might not be the same in a year or so. So really, your mileage may vary, but you do want to make sure that you're trying different objectives. So what I would recommend starting out is if your objective is you're trying to get people to register for something, then go with the website conversion objective. And if you start to see that, you know, kind of fall off or you want to try different variations where you're testing five dollars a day, go ahead, you know, try clicks, for example. In some cases, I've seen clicks perform better than conversions. Right. And, and vice versa. So try different objectives and then see what the results are for you. Number four, make sure ad frequency is less than two. Anytime it gets more than two, you're spending way too much money. Add in new creatives, new text, new copy, etc. Uh, the moment your frequency starts getting closer to two, your ad cost per click, per impression, etc. starts skyrocketing. So make sure it's a lot lower than that. All right. And number five. This is a term from digital marketer. This is the ad set, right? So whatever copy you have, whatever imagery that you have in your ad, you want to make sure that's congruent on your landing page too, right? Because people want, they want, they don't want to see like a really good ad and then go to a site that looks like it's from the 1990s. And I've seen that actually in uh, digital marketers, uh, Facebook group, somebody posted a really good looking ad. And then the page went to a site that looked really scammy and really sketchy. When that happens, you have to think about what the user thinks your conversion rates are going to tank if you're not congruent with how your ad and your landing page is uh, set up. Number six, once you start capping out and you're growing your, what is called your ad campaigns, like I spend more than $5,000 a day. And this is really simple to have on your checklist. But as you grow, create another ad account and duplicate your campaign for some weird reason. And we're seeing this across the board with many people and many different campaigns. When you create a duplicate campaign in a new ad account, the new ad account is seeing way lower cost for impression. So all you do is create a new ad account, you share the pixels, you share the audiences, and you're good to go. All right, number seven, don't be afraid to explore new ideas. So for example, uh, you might look at Ad Expresso. Ad Expresso has an ad gallery that you can look at. There's a lot of different ads, great ads, that you can kind of look at them and say, okay, here's three that I like, and then here's you know three that I'm gonna go to my designer and say, hey, I wanna do something similar to this. And, you know, you can go to a site like swiped.co and look at, you know, different uh, long form landing page copy and just get different ideas, right? Just save the ads that you like. I often save a lot of ads that I see um, that have gotten me to kind of at least pay attention. Um, I save, you know, videos too. I, I try to pull ideas all the time. For example, G Star right now, they're running like a video ad, which is basically um, it, it kind of flashes in your face, right? It gets your attention. Um, and I'm like, Wait, you know, that's pretty cool. I might try that out for something else or um, other things that you want to pay attention to, too, like if you're looking at other ads, for example, videos, right? Another good example is when you look at videos, well, they have a little 
the, the captions, right? You might go to the site like rev.com, get your captions done there, put it into your video, and then you're going to see, um, you know, better performance. But you just want to draw ideas everywhere, uh, which is why, you know, I've given you the resources or shared those resources there. So I think that's number seven. Um, that's it for today's episode of Marketing School. We'll see you tomorrow. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School.